Hey. Yeah, it's episode good. 60. 60. What? <laughs> what? Of Alex and Jim Analyze Billy Joe Lyrics. Episode 60. Episode 60. Did That's you ever all... think we'd be 60? I owe... Al- so I always hoped I would just be 60. <laughs> <laughs> I, I always liked the idea of being an old man. Huh. But not too old. Yeah, it's a good sweet spot. I don't want to be the... I don't want to be this guy. Right. Mm-hmm. And I know I've seen a few of those guys, the guys with the, and that are still somehow, they still think that they can get around. Yeah. And they're yeah. mistaken. The ones that like strangers worry about them when they're walking the streets. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, ver- the ones where if you're making a right turn and they are in the crosswalk, you're like, ah, I want to be out here a lot longer than I thought. <laughs> Yeah, I'm getting honked at, but it's not me. Yeah, and I've I've gotten mad at the person behind me because I do that. I have rage issues, mm-hmm. so, particularly when driving. I'm like, what is it you want me to do? Yes, kill, the that, man. kill him. Is say it, and I will. But just tell me. <laughs> I mean, I'll do it. I need structure. <laughs> <laughs> just tell me to kill the old man. Yeah, but yeah, That's unclear. But sixty, I, I, uh, I'm not there yet. I'm still, nope. uh, but I do not. I never minded that idea. I never I, uh, much even considered it. Really? Okay. Yeah, yeah. I have a massive fear of death, and I uh, try not to think about being old or dead or ill. Yeah. Um, and I. Sometimes it's, you know, sometimes you end up behaving like a much younger person to your detriment. Yeah. Um, I'll have a third Negroni, I'll say. On yeah. A week. And then uh, my whole next day is I feel like a very old man the next day. And I'm like, oh, this uh, backfired on me. Now, for people who don't, people who don't know, a Negroni is an Italian slur, right? It's, you're half right. <laughs> it's a lovely drink. What is it? What is a Negroni? You know, I would love to tell you what's in it. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I think it's. <laughs> I know there's Campari in it, which I love very much. Okay, so it's um, a sweeter drink. It's a sweeter. It's it's like a bitter orange liqueur. Okay. So it's kind of it's got a bitter situation. I don't know what's in it. They're I very. <laughs> I think I would probably enjoy one. That sounds good. A little, yeah, that actually, yeah. Yeah, look into it. What I, what I know so far, I like. But then I'll find out, oh, and it also has asparagus juice. What? Alex didn't say that. <laughs> oh, no. No, it's, a, it's very delightful. There's a little orange peel in it. Oh, that's good. Okay. Yeah. So it's a summery thing probably, right? Summery, but powerful. It's a summer evening. Yeah. Right. For sure. And is it one of those drinks where if you're not careful because you think to yourself, ah, it almost doesn't taste like there's any liquor in it at all. Yeah, it's so delicious. And a lot of cocktails are like, this is good, but not delicious. And you can pace yourself. Yeah. You can have a bourbon and be like, oh, that, it hurts every time I drink this. So I'll take my time. But in a groaning, you're like, oh, this is fun. It's fun to drink. And then it's gone, and like, well, it's only nine thirty, and then yeah, yeah, Gatorade and Advil. Then um, next, next thing you you wake up and go, I think I was actually hammered. Uh huh. Oh, and I think I told that stranger that thing I don't like to tell people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh wait, that wasn't a stranger. Oh no. <laughs> and I go to work. Yeah, and then yeah. I ran over that old man because somebody honked at me. Yeah, but what were you going to do? What were you supposed to do? Wait? It was unclear. Yeah. <laughs> I had to be somewhere. Now, downside, he's dead. Upside, doesn't have that hump anymore. Yeah. Doesn't have that weird thing. A thing where people Don't should... Remember when, remember when you were a kid, you want to say to that guy, and your parents told you to stand up straight? This is what they were talking about. That's what they were talking about. My mother used to punch me between the shoulder blades. 
<laughs> just like before we walked into a restaurant or something. <clears throat> Let's say stand up straight. Wow. Yeah. Hard? Like hard enough. Okay. Like, oh, this we're not joking around here. Yeah. Right <laughs> for four minutes. Oh, uh, that's pretty funny. Yeah. I uh my yeah, my my dad gave me a couple pops every now and then. I think I've told you that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Classic sixty year old man. Uh, so that's why I look forward to being oh, we'll start hitting kids. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, you do get away with straight up murder. <laughs> Oh, just funny things you can get away with as an old man that are just bizarre. Like, I like the things old men can say to young cashiers. Oh boy! Without getting arrested. Yeah, I feel like the window's closing on it a little. Oh shoot! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, get out there. I remember I've told this to a friend of mine, Brandy Posey, very funny comic. I was like. Because I, I, I put it in a bit for a while, but it's a true story where I just saw this old man say to a cashier, and the cashier was in her 20s, she had to be in her 20s, and this dude was in his, like, 70s. Hmm. And he go, and he said to her, oh, man, if I was only a little bit younger, the things i do to you, he Ooh, said. Whoa. Right at it. And she laughed. Okay. And... If I had, what I wanted to say was, you know, he's talking about old timey rape, right? Yeah. He's not talking about charming something. Oh, he's not. I would do to you. Yeah. He's not. I'd take you on a nice dinner. No, he's like, I used to have a basement. <laughs> he never uh, found me. <laughs> yeah. Looking. <laughs> yeah. Remember that Zodiac killer? <laughs> yeah, looking at him. <laughs> I'm a Capricorn myself. <laughs> oh. So, oh, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I always I always liked the idea of being an older fella. And then I know I've said this before, but in my 20s and stuff, I was too mad. Yep. And I, and I, and I knew it. I think I was at least the one thing I will say in my defense of young Jim Bruce is young Jim Bruce at least knew he was angry for no reason. There were times when I was aware. Yeah, he was good at self-reflection. Yeah. Young Bruce. For a guy that age. Yeah, I was. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Yeah. And I wasn't, yeah. <laughs> wasn't taking <laughs> swings at people, and I didn't. But there were definitely times when, like, this is a thing that would happen to me. I probably still happen to be as... <laughs> At a party, if I made a joke that got took the wrong way because I had maybe pushed the boundaries a little bit and somebody got mad, I would go, all right, well, then that's all I'm doing tonight. That's that's <laughs> right. all of tonight is we're going in with this material. Sorry, Earth, you are scorched. <laughs> yep. You remember one time you were on stage doing stand-up at uh, Tequila Mockingbirds. And you had a plastic devil's pitchfork. And yes. I don't know why. And you were doing some bit about being a little devil or something. <laughs> and some lady started heckling you. And you just started screaming at her that you were going to shove it up her ass. <laughs> You're going to shove that fork up your ass. And then you, the rest of your act was over. <laughs> and it was just threatening this lady. <laughs> <sighs> And she didn't back down, and it was just a screaming match. That was great. That just a screaming match would have been a better name for that bar. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just a screaming match, and then a free pitcher. That's right. So, Alex, and I used to go to this bar called Tequila Mockingbird, and <laughs> I saw my one and only true cowboy bar fight at that bar. Wow. And it was old time cowboy bar fight, bodies flying, chairs thrown, a melee. And wow. and I happened to be in a booth. Uh Rindy was there, our friend Rindy was there, and uh we just watched it. <laughs> and it was yeah. kinda great. Sure, you're not in it. Great. And it was just 
it's like you staged it because a dude got thrown over the bar and it all started for the dumbest reason. Of course. There was a movie theater next door and yeah. the movie theater happened to be playing um what was the not passion of the christ what was that earlier controversial jesus movie um with william defoe i think well that was passion of the christ with william defoe wasn't it um so it wasn't the one it, this was not the mel gibson movie oh, no, right it was um the one where jesus kind of has a dream of if he wouldn't have made the sacrifice and got to marry get married to mary magdalene and right i'm just googling defoe jesus <laughs> <laughs> the thing the last temptation of christ the last temptation of christ so the last temptation of christ was in the theater and this female comic with red hair who called herself faith if you remember faith i don't remember faith. was on stage and she was going to do a bit about the movie but her bit about the movie was being drunk and just saying people were stupid for being bothered by it. That was the bit. It's not very well thought out. I don't remember Faith. Yeah. And there were drunk cowboys in the audience who likes them some Jesus. Sure. And a disagreement. But <laughs> <laughs> oh, And then a bar fight broke out of i like this movie i don't like this movie <laughs> uh, a fucking art house jesus movie yep <laughs> and you know that that even playing there yeah yeah that's a good question too i'm because it's one of those places that had like 12 screens and they just like had to fill them up yeah and because it's tucson it's probably also these are the movies they gave us because it you know Tucson's not right. a dip. You know I I was in one year I stayed in this small city with my sister when I was taking a break from my parents and I got a little vacation, mm -hmm. and they had one movie theater and if you wanted to go see a movie it just you went to see the movie that was there. Yeah. So we went to see Roadie with uh, <laughs> Meatloaf and Blondie were the stars. Wow. It's not very good. No. Blondie's very pretty, but it's not very good. <laughs> oh, man. But that was great. It was on actual bar fight. Right. I and saw it was... in Yuma, but it was not Cowboys, oddly enough. In Yuma, <laughs> Arizona, it was uh, Marines. Oh, hell. Because there's a Marine base there. Yes, there is, because I did a show with that base. Yeah. And it, I don't know what started it because it was one moment. It was, this, it was the Shiloh Inn. It was like the, the nice hotel in town had a bar. And it was a huge bar. <laughs> it was like a ballroom. Dude, that's where I performed. At the Shiloh? Yeah. Wow. I saw a hypnotist there once. And I uh, was sitting in the front row and I had to leave because I was going under. <laughs> I was like, oh, fuck, it's working on me. I got, eh. And I got out of it. <laughs> but yeah, this fight, there was like, everyone was drinking and yammering. And then it was like that 40 people were fighting each other. And I had no idea what happened. Wow. And I was there with a girl and she grabbed our drinks and she said, you go to the bar and tell them they spilled our drinks and we'll get free ones. <laughs> so then we had four drinks. Good. She's a, that's a good girl. That's a good girl. Or a really bad girl. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> wow, man. And the thing about, so yeah, I performed there for Marines and I have to say it was one of, I have fond memories. I have, was talking to a friend of mine about how to this day, I remember so many specific shows Yeah. for a variety of reasons. Like I'll remember a nightmare show and often find them funny but those shows where everything worked where i was the king of the world where people loved me and i got what you want out of stand-up and that was one of those nights and it was filled with marines who could not have been more supportive and happy to see comedy right and who bought me a bunch of drinks ah. and just sat and we talked and laughed and 
who knows those guys might have been about to be deployed because that's part of what's going on in their lives is how nice was it to get off base and to just tie one on and probably like oh there's normally not a show here and wow we're not just drinking these guys are making us laugh and my act particularly back then was so just ridiculously goofy and low stakes so it was probably the perfect like antidote if you like are living a high stakes life you're like i just saw this idiot who danced because i used to do a bit where i danced and stuff back when i wasn't fat (laughs) (laughs) great it would be a different kind of funny now. Now it would be more sad. <laughs> <laughs> Someone would hit you with a car. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. But it was glorious. I've had the pleasure of performing for for people in the military a couple times. And for some damn reason, I may or may not agree with their politics, but they know how to watch a show. Yes, that is true. They understand when there's a system... They're like, oh, they lock into the system. The system is you laugh and applaud. I tell the jokes. You buy me a drink afterwards. And they're like, great, got it. Dude, that feels like a brilliant observation because I never thought of it that way. (laughs) It's Yeah, they click into a system. Wow, yeah. I remember I did a show in um, Vegas and this man and woman who were both Marines, they're married, and they had, you know, they were no longer in the Marines. They, you know, they had done their time, uh, did their stint, not their time, but their, they had done their stint and they had served in Iraq. And I, and they were talking to me and I, somehow that came up and they said, well, you were great. And I go, well, please, what I do is nothing compared to what you do. And the woman goes, God, I hate it when people say that. Listen, it's fine. We did what we did, but we came to see what you do. And we're really glad you were here. And I was like, Okay. And I, right. I took that to heart as a thing to remember that it's good to be humble and whatever, but it's also good to know you did something. Yeah, absolutely. It all yeah. counts. Yeah. She made my night. She really did. She was, it was like glorious because she was just not having my full, <laughs> my full right. humility bullshit. Your service. Yeah. She was like, yeah. no. I have a, I have a peeve that I don't know if military people would agree with, but I have always thought, why are they the only ones who are serving their country? You know, why do we reserve that phrase for them? Yeah. And like, there are a lot of ways to serve the country. Educating children is one of them, you know, feeding people like most of us to some degree, entertaining the country <laughs> that counts. Yeah. Like it's I know it's shorthand for just being in the military, but I'm like, I don't like that nobody else's work counts as service. Because it's you know, strictly speaking, they get paid. Yeah. They're not, they're not servants. And it wasn't compulsory. They made a choice. Although oftentimes that's what makes it more noble, of course. But Although I guess yeah. they said politicians serve. Yeah. I mean, if politicians are serving, then fucking everybody is. Then everybody is for sure. (laughs) Yeah, if Matt Gates is serving by his his dedication to underage sex. Serving 10 to 20. Oh, that's coming down the pike. I can't wait. I hope so. Yeah. If that, then it's just anarchy if he doesn't go away. Yeah. All right. All right, let's talk about music. It's like we're avoiding this song. <laughs> uh, so I picked it. Sorry. Yeah, Sorry, Erica. <laughs> Alex, I serve you. Alex picked "Why Judy Why," and another title for this could be "Why Billy Why." Why Billy uh, Why? <laughs> it's um, how would you describe the music? The definitely the music des- definitely feels like when you talk about aping other styles trying to sound like the beatles trying to sound like it's like that but not trying very hard it's just it's interesting it definitely has a little paul mccartney ish yeah but almost as if you aped his laziness huh (laughs) it's like a stick figure version of a Beatles song like it's sort of how it goes yeah like if you were trying to imitate one of his bad songs. <laughs> yeah. 
yeah. one, one of like the phone it in songs because you know Paul McCartney, brilliant lyricist, brilliant songwriter, but check out his his discog. By the way, if you're gonna need a month of just dedicated time because it's so many songs, but there's songs in there that are just garbage. Sure. Yeah. Half thoughts. Yeah. I'm like, oh, just lay it down and come back to it later, and just never come back to it later. Yeah, some of them feel like he went in the studio and he went, I'm Paul McCartney. I'm just, I'm done. <laughs> right. Yeah. I got places to go. What, what's anybody going to say? Are they going to tell Paul McCartney this wasn't good? No, they're not. The only guy who would oh. got shot. <laughs> wow, new suspect in the case. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's... It, what struck me and what will strike you if you dare to listen to this song is that uh, for a Billy Joel song, there sure is no piano in it. Yeah. And uh, I kind of want to know what happened. I feel like maybe some producer was heard him do it on the piano and said, like, wow, this song stinks. What if it was guitar? <laughs> <laughs> like completely didn't notice the actual problem. Yeah like just change the instruments then it'll be fine yeah you it's know like change all the lyrics and the melody i wonder if that was chasing a solution coming up with the wrong solution and then well we're finished because you had three hours left to record yeah so there's the song that you recorded no uh, uh, let me do it on piano well we can we already burned three hours yeah and it ain't gonna be better <laughs> So this is an, this is a seaside <laughs> on the back of the forty-five. And the funny thing, though, is you can imagine that if you had done it on piano, that what we would probably be saying right now is, "Boy, I don't love that song, but the piano's really pretty." Is what we'd end up saying. That's what we'd end up saying. That's the the thesis sentence for Cold Spring Harbor as an album. Like, yeah, oh, pretty piano. Yeah, that guy's good at that thing. Yep, and. Uh, you know, learning to be a lyric writer, I guess. Um, yeah. But yeah, this is like the, you know, there was a, I can't remember who the novelist was, but he, his theory was you should write your first novel and then throw it in the ocean and then write a novel. <laughs> That's pretty good. Whatever you do first is just going to reek of firstness. Yeah. And, uh, nothing more so than this particular song from that this album yeah it's That's one it. of the, you ever look at the list of tracks and when you get a new album you don't know anything about it and you just i'll read the titles and then you're like oh boy that song's gonna stink based on that title i think you would do that with why, why judy why yeah yeah for sure it's um <laughs> it's well so melodramatic just out of the gate yeah double wise and then it doesn't um and then it doesn't earn it in the song. No. Because like Meatloaf, it's all melodrama. It's yeah. all melodrama, but it's also on purpose. <laughs> it's also on purpose. It's also one directional unit melodrama. Yeah. It's a brand for him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot not to like in this song. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's it's funny because I'll defend a lot of songs of Billy Joel's because I like Billy Joel, and but this is not a good song. And but as we've said, he does not like the album anyway. Yes, and uh, that's the best thing you can say about this album. <laughs> is that Billy Joel doesn't like it. The guy who created it has admitted that it's bad. <laughs> it's funny, you sh but it's funny. There are the occasional artists where their first work is their best work, and that's just how it is. Yeah. And that's weird too. This, I think a lot of artists, their first album is not their first work. Like they've been at it for a while. Yeah. In clubs or whatever. Before you hear that. I feel like he was in piano bars, probably mostly doing covers. Yeah. And then somebody was like, oh, you're a good pianist. You should make an album. And like, we're seeing like his notebook of lyrics. Yeah. Uh, is what it feels like at least i hope he wasn't at it for five years before he came up with this yeah that's like, funny oh, why no <laughs> why cindy why oh who who oh. how judy how 
No. <laughs> when? All across when? When, Cassandra? I was going to say Bernice. <laughs> when, Bernice? When? Bernice. Well, <sighs> we very likely grew up with a Bernice. Yeah. Did, did you ever know a Bernice? I don't think I ever did. I don't think so. Those ladies of the age of Bernie, she'd be like, Bernie. everybody call her Bernie. Yeah. BB or something. BB, and you never knew her name was Bernice. That's BB. right. One of those 60 year old lady names. Yeah. Like uh, Peaches. <laughs> That's right. And if you ever learned her name, you'd go, oh, I'm going to call it. I'm going to call her that the next time I see her. She's going to be so mad. <laughs> yep. And because she was sassy, you knew you were going to get something awesome. <laughs> Did I ever tell you about when I met Elaine Stritch? No. So I went to see Elaine Stritch in concert. Uh, Elaine Stritch at Liberty. She was fantastic. Right. Had a chance to meet her backstage because we had really good tickets. And I'm just kind of milling about, when do I come out? And she goes, if you want to say hi to me, you better do it now. <laughs> so went over and said hi to her. And they yeah. told her how great the show was and she made fun of me some more. And I was like, fucking hey, that was the best way that could have gone. That's the best. And she knew because she was like, I'm going to lane stretch the fuck out of this guy. <laughs> I, I know my brand. I got I'm in a stretching mood. And she just was mean, but not really. It was no. just she was being the character that I came to see. <laughs> you got stretched. Yeah, you got stretched. <laughs> and what a delightful woman. And I'm so grateful I got to see that show before she passed. It was like, what oh. a great lady. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. <laughs> now, let's look at these uh, stupid lyrics. <laughs> <laughs> you want to go first? Sure. Uh, well, you know, maybe they're not the worst lyrics, but... Uh, Boy, they try. <laughs> working hard. Of all the people in the world that I know, you're the best place to go when I cry. When I cry, I never asked for much before. Not before. <laughs> <laughs> Things are changed. I need more. Tell me why, Judy. Why? Oh, oh man. Oh, what I, is... I think that's the first song we've covered that starts with of. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Has to be. What a pathetic, sad sack here. Of all the people in the world that I know, you're the best place to go when I cry, when I cry. Things have changed. I need more. Tell me why, Judy, why? Because you're always crying. You're always crying. That's why I don't want to hang out. I played this song for Sue, and she shouted out that same thing at that line. <laughs> because you're always crying. <laughs> it's like, yeah. Also, why what? Yeah. Why did, why are you leaving me? Yeah. I assume. Um, yeah, real clear. Because if it's why I'm crying, I don't know. You're just always crying. Yeah. <laughs> also, of all the people in the world that I know, I'm the prettiest. I'm uh, the most uh, efficient at work. No, you, I, you're you're nice to go to when I'm weeping. <laughs> That's what I'm good for. Ugh. You cry on me. That's why you like me. Yeah. Uh, you're fun, Billy. But listen, uh, I was thinking of going out with this other guy. You know what he does? He doesn't cry so much. Yeah. Sometimes, but not much. Yeah. He laughs also. He'll and, uh, cry. Not the shittiest lyricist in the world. <laughs> and he doesn't come over specifically because, oh, you know what? I feel like crying and bitching and moaning. Ah, uh, go go over to go over yeah. to her house. Yeah, you up. <laughs> a, oh. A tear duct full of salt. <laughs> For you, baby. <laughs> no. All right. <laughs> That's so great. I love that Sue said that because, yeah, that's the problem here. Yeah, that's a, you answered your own question, Weepy. 
By the way, this is not one of those songs where you could say, oh, but maybe he's doing that on purpose because it's about a set. No, it's not. Nope. He's not aware that he's painting a very pathetic picture. He's doing the thing teenage boys do when they write poetry. <laughs> yes. Not even the thing young adults do. Just 16-year-old boys who are sad because yep. they don't have a girlfriend and there's a girl they like and oh, oh, buddy yeah this is uh these are like put me on a watch list lyrics <laughs> he's like hey buddy is this your poem i mean i can't sell you a gun <laughs> sorry yeah <laughs> if you had said something nice about her yeah if you had said you had said you've you helped me work through it, you're apparently just wallowing. I'm getting better every day, thanks to you, Judy. You, <laughs> you, Judy. You. That's a much better <laughs> title. <laughs> uh, I never uh, thought. Wait, where am I? Yeah, I you're never, right. I've already lost my place. It's so terrible. <laughs> I've never thought that she would say goodbye, but she did. And now I want to die. I want to die. I never thought that I would need, need a friend, <laughs> but I did in the end. Tell me why, Judy, why? Buddy, you never thought she would say goodbye? Yeah. We all knew. Yeah, we're, we were amazed she stuck around as long as she did. We, yeah. You got sad and mope. Yeah, you got sad and mopey after like you've been together a month. Yeah, she probably would take that personally. Yeah, I think maybe she was saying, "Well, the first time I met him, we were all playing skee ball, and he seemed fun then." And she was hoping the skee ball guy would come back, but yeah, we hung around for skee ball guy for a couple months. Yeah, and you just you needed to. You were just like, oh, yeah, I thought about another thing I'm sad about. I'm going to come over, all right? Here's, uh, I'll make an observation that uh, could theoretically be good songwriting, but it's not. I okay. That, um, I There's that cloying repetition in every, uh, I want to die, I want to die. I never I never thought that I would need need a friend. Like him repeating the word yeah almost like he is crying yeah i ever thought that i would need need a friend <laughs> so I'm like oh you could be like representing the weeping in verse yeah but i feel a hundred percent sure that he didn't think of that and nobody else did either yeah and also who doesn't occasionally think they might need a friend yeah, I never thought I would need a friend. That's a dumb idea. Like, you at the very least know, oh, I'm moving into my own apartment. I'm going to need somebody to help me carry this couch. You know that, at least. Does your couch only have one end? <laughs> you know, <laughs> even at the bare minimum, you know that. But for sure. Yeah, if you're I... four years old taking swimming lessons, they tell you, get a buddy. Get a buddy, absolutely. Get a buddy. Oh, I never thought I, yeah. I never thought I would need a lunch. No, no, everybody's got to have a lunch sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Well, I just never thought I would need a lunch. Are you trying to tell me you've never had lunch? Yeah, you see everybody else having lunch. What are you? None, none for you? Are you just doing that dick thing where you have food in the middle of the day, but you're calling it something else so you can seem okay. right? So they can charge you more. Oh, it's brunch. No, oh, no. No, you're having lunch. So you can't call it brunch if you don't have lunch because it's a contraction. <laughs> and yeah, I know why she left. Moron. Yeah. <laughs> oh, what a scene. <laughs> <laughs> it's wrong for her to hang me up this way. It's, what? It's wrong for her uh, to oh where have you been because it's so hard to make it through the day a man my age is very young so i'm told why do i feel so old tell me why judy why 
So this guy's a fat mess because it's wrong for her to go. Okay, that's enough. I need, I need to look after myself a little bit. And I can't help someone you. who would get mad at us because we stopped hanging out with them because they are too needy and we be. Yeah. But they were wrong. I uh, I have cut somebody out of my life recently for that very reason. I'll tell you when we stop recording. Hey. <laughs> uh, the and, fucking gall of this turd. Yeah. It's wrong for her. <laughs> Uh, I, you, you know, you can rewrite it. Or why would you bother? Start over. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, a lot of times we have solutions for great songs that are going to be on his next album. Yeah. You try this. Uh, it's right for her to hang me up this way. Okay. Because I suck. Here, because I suck. Because I don't want to let Bruno Mars down, here's how you fix the song. Okay. He loves this shit. He does, man. Um, Song repair is his you thing. do you you do the I, and I admittedly I've had this solution before, but you write a female part. Yeah, you write a female part that counters this, and it is practically metal. It, <laughs> we we break into a real big tempo, and it's kind of more meatloafy in a way, but still, it starts. It just starts with. Dare you, sir? And then she just lays into him. And and also it's got better rhyme schemes. I'm just saying that off the gate. Yeah, yeah. It just does. But it's her going, letting every goddamn day. And she talks about all the times she was there for this idiot. And I take one day for me. And you have, that's the solution. Yeah. Now, heads up, the song is going to be 14 minutes long. <laughs> and you won't be able to hear him at all. No. <laughs> It'll just be very funny when it comes back to the why, Judy, why. And that'll salvage that because you'll then recognize that as absurd melancholy. Yeah. And now That's it's... Com good already. Yeah. Now it's become comedic and not just poorly written. <laughs> yeah. And now, uh, yeah, say, say bye, Judy, bye. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and now, oh, and then also, he does a cover of uh, Judy's Turn to Cry at the end. Just a, th uh, not a cover, but a callback to the song Judy's Turn to Cry in the music. And you remember that Leslie Gore song and you're like, ah, clever. Yeah, yeah. Bruno, what are you waiting for? Yep. Hire, hire this guy. <laughs> That's what I'm here for is to serve our number one fan, Bruno Mars, as you all know. Firmly established that he listens and loves this show. Oh, I do like, oh, what a scene. <laughs> oh, what a scene. But you, that's you. You're the scene. You're making the scene. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you're the guy who threw a vase and goes, oh, my God, I can't believe things have gotten out of control. Oh, I hate drama. You, you, yeah. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, that hurts because you know so many people who hate drama. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> I'm told, why do I feel so old? Nobody can tell you that. That's Lucky. by the way, the one relatable thing you've said, but you've squandered all goodwill. I don't want to talk to you about why you feel so old because yes, that's a valid complaint. Yeah, uh, sure. But also I'm a little misty. Yeah. Why do you feel so old? Because you are five. <laughs> You're behaving like a five year old. Yeah, why do you feel so old? Because you decided to take no joy in anything. You you herniated a disc from all the weeping. <laughs> oh, what a scene! I do like that lyric. It's just <laughs> a dumb lyric. Oh. oh, and especially with that stupid note. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> scene. Uh. And then it, you know, the other thing it sounds like is something you would hear uh, at a Ren Fair. The whole song. Yeah. 
a little tiny mandolin played by a person who's not good at the mandolin. Yep. Playing for a fucking half circle of virgins. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. All right, I think you get to close it out. Yay. A <laughs> man my age. Oh, wait, where am I? Oh, it's we're almost there. Yep. There's not much. Yeah. Not much. We're, oh, what a scene. <laughs> back. It's wrong for her to hang me up this way. Oh, where you been? Because it's so hard to make it through the day. Get him. Get this guy. There's no tomorrow. Because my <laughs> dreams did not last. So I live in the past. Ugh. Tell me. Why, Judy? Why, Judy, don't answer this text. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Block this number. The thing that just occurred to me, too, is is when he's like, it's wrong for her to hang me up this way, calling throughout the day. Oh, so she has been answering you. You're just relentless. Yeah. She's talked to you probably four times today. And then this was the time she was like, I got to eat something or I got to do my job. Turn my phone off for a while. Eight unread messages. <laughs> uh. Voicemail. Oh, six minutes. Okay. Boy, this is going to well, be good. Maybe I'll just wait till the girls are here and I'll, and I'll play it on speaker. <laughs> Make fun of him. Make fun of him and then he'll go. I'll, first, I'll fax a copy of this to the gun store. <laughs> Do not sell to this person. Oh my God, why Judy, why? Oh, I get it. That's the gun store saying, why Judy, why? Oh, you're right, we're not gonna sell it to him. Yep, a little picture Maybe. of Bill Joel next to the cash register. <laughs> this fucking shitty mustache. Yeah. yeah shitty, no, you weren't getting a gun anyway. Shitty photocopy picture. <laughs> Cold Spring Harbor guns. Oh. <laughs> No, I'm sorry, we can't. Yeah, uh, yeah. No, Judy's not here. <laughs> <laughs> For the sixth time today, she doesn't work here. <laughs> not calling every business. I told him you don't work here. <laughs> uh, oh, Jesus. That's. A, I'm glad you picked that song, legit, because that's just. <laughs> that's truly just terrible. Yeah, no redeeming qualities. I looked, I tried. It's legitimately, um, you know, you people are like, is it the French song that's the worst? I'm pretty sure it's this one. Yeah. Because this, when you say like the French song is the worst one, there's like six songs that you didn't even think of. Yeah. Didn't register. Because at least the French song was trying to do something. And it's pretty. There's pretty melodies. Yeah. And he didn't play guitar. <laughs> the guitar man is what they never called him. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, this is not good. I want to look something up really quick while we're talking just to see, because I don't think that song has lyrics. Okay. Nocturne is just music, right? Yeah. All right. I ain't picking that for next week then. <laughs> uh, I was just looking at the track listing because I, I really do like our little project because we're, we're very close to done. Yeah. Oh, good. With Cold Spring Harbor. And that was that was a fun, accidental thing we did. Who picked the first one? Was it uh, you? I don't. What was the first one we did? Uh, well, let me look at the track listing and we'll try to remember. I feel like uh, we came here, we went away, and then we came back to kill it off. Yeah. Everybody, Everybody loves you. We did. Yeah. I think that might have been the first one, which is actually not a bad song, certainly That's compared to Why, Judy, Why. We've, <laughs> we've done Why, Judy, Why now. We've done Falling of the Rain. Yeah. We've done Turn Around. We've done Tomorrow is Today. Uh, we can just... Handle Nocturne now by just telling people if you want to listen to it, it's some perfectly nice music. Yeah. Um, by the way, not even exceptional. No. Nope. Uh, little thing. Yeah. And the fact that it's not exceptional, I think, is not good because, 
usually the reason you do the song without lyrics is because I got something special to offer you. Right. Check out my uh, musicianship. Yeah. Check nope. out. Th yeah. Check out this cool tune. It's not that. It's fine. There's nothing wrong with it. Uh, whoo. Just lovely, peaceful piano music. Yeah. Maybe and it had the lyrics. Original, the original version, it ends with him going, fourth floor, ladies wear. Does it? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> But it is elevator music. It is. <laughs> Boy. Do they not announce the floors anymore? Has it been that long since the Macy's? <laughs> oh, I don't even know if there's a guy in there anymore. What? It might just be you now. Oh. Yeah. What are all those guys doing for work? I know. They're all in. I, they're all going home to their wives and saying, why? Judy? Why? <laughs> oh. Well, then they deserve whatever happens to them. That's right. Why? Uh, you are in an outdated field and you never bothered to try to find a second thing. That's why. That's why. To the moon. One of my favorite, <laughs> uh, one of my favorite 30 Rock things was when they did a parody of the Honeymooners. Do you remember that? And their version was the Ralph, the Ralph Crandon, which was played by uh, that guy who just shot somebody in dust. Uh, what's his name? Uh, the star of the show. Uh, he just shot a guy. Wait, the star of the honeymooners just shot a guy? No, uh, the star in uh, 30 Rock. Oh, Baldwin, yeah. Baldwin did a character, and their version was he just said really violent things. It was a very funny take on it. Yeah, <laughs> it's like, I swear to God, if you, I, if I, oh, I'm gonna cut you up and put you in a box, <laughs> stuff like that. <laughs> Nobody will ever find your body. It's and shit like that. It was pretty funny, actually. It was in that. It was in that live episode. Oh yeah, which I enjoyed, and I liked that show. Did you like that show? Yes, I love that show. Yeah, it's um, some of the best jokes ever. Yeah, it was a really, really. Yeah, it... I can't sit and watch three of them because the the rhythm of it is like. It's great. The jokes are great, but the rhythm and the uh, cynicism of it is like a dentist drill after a while. Oh, funny. So you can watch it one or two and then you're like, fine. I got to find a character to care about. See you guys later. Yeah, that's true. Who could? Kenneth is about the closest. Yeah. And that's over the top. You're like, he's sincerity. He's in sincerity chiseled out of wood. You know, he's just perfect sincerity. I would love, I'm, I'm here to tell you that's exactly what he's like. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. Uh, I, it's weird because that sincerity doesn't com come across as syrupy either. I guess that's because he's just like that. Just a real Southern nice boy. Just a guy who will treat you nice at lunch and probably this pick up his, his idea of a, a mean bit that he would do with me uh, whenever I saw him out at a party or something or at some event. I'd be like, oh my God, Jack, how's it going? Good to see you. And he would go, how dare you? That was his little bit. Oh, that's great. I was like, oh, that's cute. <laughs> oh, that's great. And, and I'm sure he was, he's one of those who lets you off the hook pretty quick. Oh, yeah. 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 Uh, I'm going to say a mean thing, but I'm, I can't help smiling during it. <laughs> uh, get yeah. out of here. Lovely human being, absolutely. And just well, keep looking, I clicked on some weird uh, link. Okay. And, uh, I got free boner pills. No. Um, <laughs> uh, related to this song, and I'm learning that this song was used in an episode of This Is Us. Wow. Wow. To probably to kill off a main character. Is that a plot point? Maybe there's like a character who only likes bad Billy Joel songs. It's a character trait. <laughs> That's a weird song to use because then that means somebody in a writer's room. So let me ask you this. Is it, it's gotta be one of two things. Somebody in a writer's room wants to use Billy Joel and they like that song. Yeah. And probably liked it from the very beginning at a different point in their life and never learned that it was bad because now they're at a different point in their life, but nostalgia being what it is. Sure. Or, 
they wanted a different song, but this one was much cheaper. I really like option B. That's probably it, huh? Seems entirely likely. Yeah. Wow. Because that's like, such a... Or they were just like, we need a song that makes dumb people cry. <laughs> 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 yeah, I wonder. And maybe in the background... No, it's not a good song, though. But maybe in the background it is? Maybe. I didn't, who, I didn't you know, know, we who... were... T I was talking to a friend of mine about the inscrutability of the songs they choose for movies. Do you remember the movie The Super? The Super. Yeah. Joe oh. Pesci plays a guy. Oh, oh, vaguely, yes. Joe Pesci plays a guy whose dad owns some slums where black folks live in New York. And right. he's the super, being made the superintendent. And the idea is to squeeze as much money out of these suckers. And eventually, I think they're going to sell it off and everyone's going to be homeless and all, all that stuff. And... Uh, he does something, he gets in trouble, and the judge sentences him to live in one of his buildings. Oh, you know, boy. Judges will do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And when he goes in the, lives in the building, and he learns that the tenants are people with what? dreams and lives of their own. Huh. You know, that there's a mom who has a kid, and boy, they deserve a little sympathy and empathy and whatever. Are you telling me he had some kind of change of heart? He did, and he goes to... An event that I can only describe as a black barbecue. Sure. <laughs> okay. that, is an, that is not me describe. That's exactly what it is. It's like black yeah. folks having a barbecue, having so much fun. That's what you call that. And one of the ways you know that it's a black barbecue is they play music that urban folks listen to. Mm -hmm. Because you're at a party and you're, of course, going to listen to the hippest the hippest of the hip hop, you know, the the streetest music you're going to listen to. Of course, they're listening to street music because they're from the street. What are yeah. we listening to? MC Hammer. <laughs> oh, boy. MC Hammer letting you know, by the way, that you can't touch this. Literally that song, you can't touch this. And this was at least six years after okay. there was a chance. So was an excuse to sneak it into a soundtrack. This was at least six years after it was a giant hit. Wow. It was, it was probably after we discovered he was not legit enough to not quit because he, in fact, did quit. <laughs> and, and there's the scene of Joe Pesci dancing and walking to his apartment singing the song. And you're like, well, he's turned over a new leaf because now he can relate to the black man. That's <laughs> so great. Oh, it's oh. so yeah it's an amazing film <laughs> <laughs> well, i bet it, yeah i bet if i watched it now i would end up just laughing nonstop because it's it was absurd then oh i wonder who else was in it oh right that's a wonderful question uh bruno yeah. mars if you want to write in and let us know who else was in the super starring joe pesci yeah, yeah. With the MC Hammer. And I believe, this is what I believe happened with that film. I bet it was in development hell forever, and they had already paid for that song. I bet that's what happened. <laughs> it's a very good chance. It, it doesn't sound like it got green-lighted very quickly. No, because it was, you know, well, Joe Pesci was funny in Home Alone. It was all of that. It was like, so he can do comedy. Well, kind of. Right. But he, want, he wants to star. Yep. Yeah. He doesn't want to be one of two burglars. Yep. And... Yeah, and it's, boy, man, it is by the numbers. That movie is by the numbers. It's amazing. All right. We got recommended viewing. Yep. All right. Uh, so hold on. Song. So now if you wanted a beverage, that lady's having a beverage. Oh, yeah. Well, sort of. Yeah. And then uh, and then if you needed to take care of yourself, you could do that, too. Huh. And that's uh, the most on-the-nose reference to such a specific lyric. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> is it on the nose? Yeah, yeah, it is. That's the first thing I was thinking is, uh, oh, have a beer on, on me. I don't think that's a lyric anywhere. Yeah, I don't. Well, it's a lyric somewhere probably, but I don't probably. think a Billy Joel lyric. No. Is it a beer or is it just a drink? It is a beer. It is a beer. 
And uh, she's uh, in child's pose. She's face down. Yep, she is face down doing what? It's all very specific. She's uh, <laughs> face down, relaxing, that, sleeping. That's a beer, and she's doing what? what the pants. What? Look at the pants. What kind of pants are those? Yeah, she's doing yoga. There's, there you go. Beer and yoga. That's what she's doing. Beer and yoga. Huh. And by the way, I'll just get, preface this by saying that this lyric that I'm referencing exists years before the phenomena of beer and yoga. And I wonder if they got the idea from Billy Joel. <laughs> <laughs> is he secretly the creator of beer and yoga, which is now apparently a thing? Because when I looked for the picture, there were thousands of pictures I could have chose from. <laughs> there are apparently so many dummies in so many stupid cities who are like, we do yoga, but you can have a beer while you're here. We're fun. I mean, there's goat yoga, so there had to be beer yoga. Yeah. I'm not a fan of that, by the way. I okay. have a go get a beer. Go to yoga. When did Billy Joel ever mention yoga? In a right. Song? It's got to be just once. <laughs> well, before this, well, I mean, every Billy Joel song is before this phenomenon. Right. <laughs> well, let's, I'm going to give you one more hint. And I, well, let's I've say that, today. let's say that the beer is not for her. Uh huh. She's just being funny. She's like serving it, let's say. Right. So the beer is for someone else, but the yoga is for her. Huh. <laughs> I'm just going to tell you the lyrics. I'm going to tell you why I'm an idiot. No, I mean, I'm hearing it now. Um, I can't remember the name. It's not Weekend Song. Um, what is that song called? A Room of Our Own? That's it. Nicely done. I like it. I, you like yoga. I like beer. Yeah, you've got your yoga, honey. I've got my beer. And the whole song, the whole song is if we eventually we'll talk about it, but it's of uh, because we have to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's our devil's bargain. Uh, but the whole song is things that she has and things that he has. Right. Um, but but we've got a room of our own. In fact. It's a much healthier relationship, even if it's not a great relationship, than this fucking relationship he has with Judy. I'll say that. For sure. Although he, she does have, uh, he has cigarettes and uh, she has razor blades or something. Yeah, that's true. But at least they're in it together. It's not they're just together. him crying. We have separate interests, but dang it, we got a room of our own. Yeah. <laughs> so what? why you were... Jams, you were gonna that this song jams. That song does. Room it does. Our, yeah. Um, Wish we'd talked about that. <laughs> should should we take a break from Cold Spring Harbor and um, pick it for next week? That'll be my song. Hey man, the ball is fully in your court. We're gonna talk about this, and I promise you, we will come back to Cold Spring Harbor. But I feel like we all need a little bit of a break, and yeah. it seems and it makes sense because. We just did episode 60. We're starting episode 61. So we'll do something different when we start into this next round of 10. We're in our 60s now. Yeah. Let's have some fun. I can barely walk now across the street. People are trying to run me over. Who needs it? But and when you're in your 60s, you're not in great shape. But you, now you can afford a room of your own because you've got a pension. Absolutely can. And sometimes you get a second room upstate. That's right, because you're doing fine, you're, and you're also right. You're was, wasting less money. Hey, do you watch British game shows? Sometimes. Do you watch uh, Eight Out of Ten Cats? I think that's called. No. Or Nine Out of Ten Cats. Um, it's Jimmy Carr hosts it, and the reason, but that's not saying anything because he hosts most of them. Yeah. He hosts most of Britain. If there's a show, he's real busy, and he uh, apparently is a tax dodger and everybody likes to make fun of him for it and he's <laughs> good humored about it fantastic but uh there was this comic on and i i love i love british humor because 
he introduced him and he goes, he's a 20 year old comic, but he dresses like a 60 year old pensioner. And it was such a lovely little joke. And he, and he goes, I, I like that insult, Jimmy, because it suggests that I have money. <laughs> it's like everybody. Uh, but by uh, the way, this is why that show would never be a hit here. The whole point of it is they make jokes, sure, while they're all doing math. Yeah, great. They're doing maths. They're doing maths after being arrested on a drugs charge. And they're all pretty good at maths and they remember the stuff. Yep. And the audience, they have an audience that of regular people who are all like, we enjoy people doing maths. It's a charming little island. And you brought a peep, but you bring a bunch of regular people into a studio and see that they're watching people do maths. See how fast Americans just riot. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, so everyone's being smart, huh? I, so I guess the name of the show is You All Think You're Better Than Me. This show is good. I'm sorry, I'm not, not going to say what I had a call back in mind. Well, to our conversation before we went on the air, but I'm not going to bring it up. Oh. I have a trivia question. Yay, okay, cool. It was printed out on our printer by my beautiful assistant. Oh, damn it, you're making an effort. What the hell's going on here? Well, it's it's all I owe it all to Sue. I would not make any effort, <laughs> but Sue, she loves effort. So today's trivia question is: I have a list here of every female name mentioned in a Billy Joel song. There are eh, 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 there are fourteen. How many can you grab? Okay. Jimmy set the timer uh, uh, one minute. Okay. Judy. Yeah, good job. <laughs> Virginia. Yeah. Uh, Lena. Mm -hmm. um, That's three. Brenda. Nice. Okay. It's time to go. Lana? No, not Lana. Lana's not no, Lana. Lana. I'm going to guess Maria, just to guess. No, no Maria's. Oh, maybe, maybe he's better than we thought. They're good job not doing Maria. Um, Three of these are straight up the title of the songs. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, um, Christy Lee. Christy Lee, yep. Oh, uh, let's see. Um, Is that one song with the cuss word in it? Yeah, that's right. The one about his mom. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> oh man, this is this is a good good job, Sue. This is fun. This is a lovely one. And the timer's the right thing to do because yeah, otherwise well, time's up. But... Okay. Well, what did I miss? A lot, but I got a decent amount. You got four. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Alexa. Yeah. Uh, not you, Angelina. Angelina. I was going to say Angelina. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, sorry, my Alexa is yelling at me because I said her name. <laughs> Alexa, Angelina, Brenda, Christy Lee, Diane. Okay. Elaine. Elaine. People that you knew at Elaine's. Yes, okay. Yep, okay. That feels like a tricky one, but that's a good one. That's, that's, good that's one. almost not fair. Eliza. Eliza, okay. Judy. Judy, yes. Yeah. Laura. Laura, you're never going to guess Laura because it's just not a name you're going to remember. It's the title. I know, but I mean as a name in general. Oh, yeah, it doesn't stick to your brain very well. Laura disappears pretty quick. Uh, this also isn't quite fair. Mama Leone. Mama Leone, yeah. Roberta. Okay, that's perfectly fair. You should remember Roberta. Yep, Rosalinda. Rosalinda. Rosalinda's eyes. That's and right. Virginia, you got... And we can do uh, male names next time, but that's much harder because none of those stick to your brain. Yeah, and there's probably a ton. <laughs> there's a lot of them. <laughs> there's probably just a ton. Wow. Okay. So, oh, so I, once I write it down because I have a terrible memory, I wrote down a room of our own. Although I didn't write that down, I wrote down a room of your own. That's what I wrote down. So. <laughs> 
No rewrites until we talk about it. That's right. <laughs> this would be let's that that'll be the trick we do sometimes. This is such a good song. How would you ruin it? What would be the mistakes he could have made? Yeah, we we haven't ruined any yet. <laughs> <laughs> it's tough because the ones we like we like, and the ones we don't, you're like, oh lord. Yeah, I hate to ruin a nice one. Yeah, because he Brendan Damn, had a, a bad one. Yeah. How would yeah. you ruin Why Judy Why? How would you ruin why Judy Weiss? Uh sing it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a good tip for you, Bruno. Oh man. All right. Well, that was actually very enjoyable the way that those things are. I will say the one saving grace of that song is there's just not one more set of lyrics. That's it. That's the only good thing I can and say. That's is, it. Yeah. Is get in, it, get out. It's and, yeah, definitely get out. Yeah, it stops. That's the good thing about that song. Is it <laughs> just kind of stops. Permanent, it's not a permanent song. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh Lord. Well, uh nice job, everybody. Good. Production team on this end. Killing it. Extra, extra double credit. Yeah. I will say Sue should treat herself to a beer or yoga. I'm going to bet the yoga is not happening. Okay. But just yeah. not both. <laughs> not both. Don't do, 